Hello and welcome to the review of the new version 2 Turnergy 9X radio, which comes in a box like this. Now, the first thing I noticed when I got this box was it's really light. It feels like there's nothing in it, but there is. The reason it's so light is all you're getting is a transmitter and a receiver and a bind plug. There's no manual, there's no batteries, there's no switches, just the very basics. So let's open it up and see what we get inside. Okay, the box itself is quite nice. It's just the normal sort of Chinese packaging, a thin cardboard outer wrapper and inside we have two polystyrene shells and get rid of this bit and as you will see in there we have the transmitter and up here we have the receiver so I'm going to take the transmitter out and also the receiver so there we have it, that's what we get for our money, and it's not a lot of money, I've got to keep telling myself, it's only a $60 radio. Now let's have a look at the receiver, there it is, it's, a, it's basically the same plastic moulding as the old version one, but it's got just one antenna and there's no facility for a satellite, there's a little hole in the case, but it's not implemented, so they're relying on the extra, tiny extra amount of gain you get from this antenna to compensate for the lack of a satellite. And also, it's frequency hopping. Yep, that's right. Looks like Spectrum is one of the few left that doesn't hop anymore. Even this really cheap $60 radio from China hops. Spectrum, nah, doesn't do it. So here's the Spectrum analyzer. We've got just background noise at the moment. I shall turn on the Turnergy radio. And we'll see immediately the background noise drops back. And here come the little peaks from the hopping that the version 2 is doing. And you see down here, also it's putting up little... Um, spikes down there as well. So there we go, it's hopping, we've got, what have we got, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 primary frequencies in the hopping chain. It seems to be biased uh, more towards the bottom end than the top, but it's pretty much a full band coverage. That's actually really, really good. I notice also that the power level seems a little bit higher on this one than the original uh, Fly Sky. So it looks like what they're doing is they're putting hopping in there and boosting the power in order to eliminate that uh, satellite that would normally come with the receiver. Now, is this going to be enough? Will this receiver with one antenna and, uh, and no satellite, will that actually be enough to overcome, uh, or will this extra power and this um, frequency hopping be enough to overcome the limitations that are intrinsic to such a simple receiver setup? I don't know yet. We will find out. And just a reminder, this is what the old original version 1 FlySky transmitter output looks like. I'll just put it down here, turn it on, see on the spectrum analyzer pretty soon. There we go, noises drop back. See that? Just a single peak down here. That's all you got, single peak. And this one is actually slightly lower power output than the new one. Not by much actually, but slightly lower. And then let's take a closer look at this transmitter. As you can see, it looks just like the old one. You should have seen my video of the old one. Um, you can tell it's a $60 radio now though, because when I turn it on, this switch is actually a real pain in the ass. Sorry, ass for Americans. It's actually very, very stiff, that switch. I am not happy with that at all. My old um, 9X switches far easier. This one feels almost like it's faulty. It comes up with the big Turnergy writing, of course, because this is the Turnergy branded version. Um, all the normal things, sticks that move, levers that flick and all that sort of stuff. So nothing new there. But look, we do have a built-in 2.4 gig aerial this time. And I'll just turn it off again. On the back, we have a module, right? So easy peasy, what do we do? If we want to put in our favorite uh, SN, FlySky, Corona, uh, free sky whatever module we just take this out right let's have a look let's pull that bit. oh hang on oh no what's going on here look at that there's a wire I mean this is quite honestly I think this is stupid look it's a module based system but you're stuffed you can't change the module because this one's wired in why bother to have a module if you're going to wire it in makes no sense at all I'm sorry uh, but this is just absolutely ludicrous uh, if you want to use another module you're going to have to cut that wire and then this aerial this antenna here isn't going to be working I'm going to show you how you can get around that in another video later on, how we can make, uh, make this a fully native 2.4, use this aerial, but use an alternative kind of system because remember this is, this is a, a system, now I can't even get it back in because the wires all come out, oh what a nightmare. To be honest, I think this is a kludge, I don't think it's a very good system at all. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that back in there. Um, oh, it really is just bad, bad, bad. So I've put that back in, but the module isn't even clicking in properly. 
It's only a $60 radio. Got to keep telling myself that. Got to keep telling myself that. Okay, so uh, the receiver comes with the bind plug. I've plugged this one in already, so I shall check it out and see if I can get it to bind. Now, to do that, we turn on the radio while holding down the little button, and that puts us into bind mode, which if you can see on these Spectrum analyzer here, it's not hopping anymore. It's putting out a single frequency just at the bottom here. I'll try and zoom in like that for you so you can get a better look. See the single frequency at the bottom? This is so that it can establish a bind with the receiver. Let's go through the bind process and see what happens. Now, I'm going to plug in the battery, which goes this way. It goes up the top here on the battery connector. So you can see that. It's just above the bind connector. Radio now. There should be an LED, right? Most of these receivers have a little LED that lights up when the system is bound. But can you see an LED? No, I can't either. But if you look really closely in there, I don't know if we can see it. Oh, we can see it from this side. See in there? There's the LED. You can't actually see it from the top or the bottom. It's only from one side you can actually see it. So, and it's quite dim. It shows up better on the camera than it actually does in real life. So that should be bound now. That's why it's got the solid red light. So I'll unplug the power. Turn the transmitter off and we'll plug a servo in, see how it goes for smoothness, see how nicely it responds to servo commands. Let's have a look. And oh, I might mention that the little circuit board in here is held in by a little bit of hot glue and I removed it earlier so the hot glue is out and now it moves around like anyone's business. It's only a $60 radio, remember, it's only a $60 radio. So right, I shall now, the transmitter turned off, I shall turn the transmitter back on and it'll be in hopping mode. So it'll be working take the bind plug out and I plug my battery back in and it all should leap into, into life. Here we go. And indeed it is. Servo movement is quite smooth compared to some of the other systems that we looked at. Certainly better than the, the early Corona frequency hopper. As you can see it's, um, there's a go, I can feel some steps there but I mean this is a, a $9 receiver. And does it swamp if we get too close? Let's have a look. No, I've got the antenna here, the, the receiver antenna right next to the transmitter antenna and it's still working just fine. So I'd say on a surface evaluation of it, it doesn't look too bad actually. Certainly I'll have to do a range check and see how far we get with this but it seems to work satisfactorily. Right here is a comparison of the original IMAX version 9X with the Turnigy. You'll notice the colour is different. I actually like the lighter colour of the old one. It doesn't get so hot in the sun. This darker colour, if you leave this in the sun, it's probably going to get pretty warm and heat is not good for electronics. Now my one has got the Free Sky 2.4 module on the back. I'm going to take that out because I'm going to find out something that I know a lot of people are going to want to know. Uh, will these new receivers bind with the old version 1 of the Fly Sky module? And this transmitter here has, I've put the version 1 Fly Sky module back in it. So this is my old IMAX. I'll turn that on. I'll hold down the bind button and turn on the radio so we can get it into bind mode. Here we go, that's in bind mode now. Here is the receiver. I've already put the bind loop plug in there and I'll just plug in the battery so we'll soon find out if it's going to work with the new radio. I'll just zoom in on it so you can see the little LED flashing with any luck. See that? No luck. The version 2 receiver will not bind to the original version 1 module. So so there you have the Turnigy 9X version 2, a very quick first look at the version 2. Um, the module, you can't change it without cutting the wire and then you've got two aerials. And trust me, if you put another module in the back here with another aerial that's parallel to this one, you're going to have problems because it's going to suck the energy out of the original transmitter module. It's not going to be any good. So if you're going to replace the module, you're either going to have to wire in this antenna to the new module or you're going to have to ditch that antenna and have the module poking at the back like you do with the normal setup, which I have down here still. So you're going to have to have that configuration and get rid of that um, built-in 2.4 antenna because if you have both of them on there, going to cause problems. So uh, that'll be another article coming up, another feature, do it yourself, how to, sit, how to put um, some other brand of 2.4 transmitter gizmos into the new 9X version 2. That's it for this review, go to the website because on the website I've got a far more comprehensive review coming up and that'll show you all the details, brownout, reset, all the stuff I normally cover with these radios and interference rejection, how well does this thing handle interference now that it's frequency hopping and what's the range like and just as importantly are we going to get shadowing? Are we going to get multipathing? Are we going to get all sorts of problems caused by the single antenna, whereas before we had a satellite receiver? You'll find out. Go to the website. You'll find it online very shortly. Thank you for watching. This has been another RC Model Reviews review.